Hey everybody, this is Will, and for the month of June, I'm doing something a little different. Uh, instead of doing a tutorial showing you how to do a certain thing in Ableton Live, I want to try to answer questions you have submitted. So if you have a question you want me to answer, send it to questions at fromstudiotostage.com. That's questions at fromstudiotostage.com. I'd be more than happy to answer that. Now, if you would rather chat one-on-one, -on -one, I also do 15-minute calls where we can chat about honestly anything, Ableton Live, best hardware, software, live streaming, whatever it is. Uh, and then I also do one-on-one -on -one sessions as well. And so you can find descriptions on how to book those, pricing, all that stuff, um, uh, links to do all that in the description of this video. So uh, today's question comes from a From Studio to Stage subscriber, Tony. And Tony is asking specifically about gear. Now, if you want to get my suggestions on gear, the best gear to use uh, for live performance with Ableton Live, then head to from studio to stage.com slash gear, download my brand new gear guide. Uh, I updated it uh, just for 2021, brand new gear, brand new controllers that we talk about. So here's Tony's question. Tony says, just wondering, if you know of any tactile control services for Ableton Live that allow you to modify the buttons, pads, sliders, uh, default CC information, control change information. For Tony's specific setup, he would like to be able to keep the current uh, control change messages from his DMC60, which is one of his controllers, and TouchOSC templates that he's using while adding another surface. Tony, fantastic question. Now, I'm going to give a couple suggestions here, but let me give you a basic premise that I think you could likely operate from. Almost any MIDI controller that includes some sort of editor software um, is going to allow you to change uh, the messages that get processed by that. So any sort of uh, uh, MIDI controller that you see that has pads, knobs, faders, or whatever, but that says it comes with some sort of editor software is going to be a good option. I pulled up a couple options here. I have one here um, in the office that I'll show. Uh, but again, I think anything that comes with a editor software in general is going to be a good option. So the couple I pulled up here, uh, Korg Nano Control, to Cork has a uh, control software that, again, lets you change um, uh, the CC messages, MIDI channel messages, how buttons interact, all sorts of fun stuff. Another one that um, I remember seeing at NAMM, I guess this was two years ago now, uh, the Studio Logic Mix Face. This is a great option. I've included links to both of these in the description of this video if you're interested in picking those up. Uh, but both of these uh, come with the ability to essentially edit them. I believe the Mix Face. Uh, I believe you can edit uh, what it sends directly on the device itself. Uh, another point, I found a lot of um, MIDI keyboard controllers, more so than just control interfaces like this, may even allow you to edit on the device itself. So a lot of times you can select a knob, a button, and edit on this device itself. Um, one of my favorite new options though, and I know this doesn't necessarily have sliders, although I have the one that has sliders, is um, the, the stuff from my buddy Jeff Kaler over at Oak Tone. This is the Oakboard Mini. I can change what each of these buttons send, and I can do it really, really easily just by sending the message I want from Ableton Live. So this is a great option. Uh, if you're looking for sliders. This is um, the Oakboard uh, Slider Duo, I think is what it's called. Uh, I've got links in the description uh, for both of these. But again, I can change exactly what these faders send, exactly what these pads send really easily just by sending the message I want from Ableton Live. And it has uh, redundant uh, USB outputs, which is really cool. So you could use it across multiple devices. So uh, Tony, that's a great question. Again, I think in general, check for um, devices that come with editor software. Picking something that's more of a MIDI keyboard is, is you're likely to find the option to actually edit within the, the controller. Check out the Nano Control, check out Jeff's stuff, check out the Mix Faces options. But to wrap up this video, um, if you're like Tony and you're going, man, that's great. I don't really love these controllers, but I have this one controller that I love, but I can't edit what it's sending. Then I've got a couple options for you too. Two of my favorite solutions, um, um, Keyboard Maestro, which is available for Mac and it proudly proclaims, which I think it holds up to this, the premier Mac automation software. What this allows you to do, what Keyboard Meister allows you to do is say, move a fader on your controller, figure out what that message is, what that CC message is, and then basically convert it to be another message, which is a great solution. It's all software-based. Uh, you don't have to buy a MIDI interface to do that, but that basically is gonna translate your MIDI information, which is, which is great. The other option I wanted to point out here as far as software solutions is Bohm MIDI Translator Pro, 
which uh, I've talked so much about this. I use this to convert, for instance, um, mini messages to mini show control messages for controlling of lights or things that are uh, expecting mini uh, show control messages. Uh, but Bone Mini Translator Pro, similar to Keyboard Maestro, um, takes data and then converts that data into something else. So what this means is you could literally take your MIDI controller and say, okay, this sends CC16, capture that in your software and keyboard maestro bone mini translator and then say okay take cc 16 and actually change it to cc 95 or whatever to match what you're currently sending so if your mini controller um, doesn't have the ability to edit stuff this could be a really good option for you all right so tony again great fantastic question uh if you're wondering like tony what's the best gear i should buy what gear suggestions do you have, Will, based on what position I am in the band? Then head to from studiotostage.com slash gear. I've put together a free gear guide. I just updated it for 2021 that has all my favorite suggestions on both hardware, software, how to get started with Ableton Live, what computer should you use, in-ears, all sorts of things. So uh, again, head to from studiostage.com slash gear to download that for free. Uh, again, if you have a question you want me to answer, and if you're watching this after June 2021, that doesn't mean it's too late for me to answer your question, then send me an email questions at from studio to stage.com. That's questions at from studio to stage.com. And I would be more than happy to answer that. Uh, if you want to chat one on one, then we can set up a 15 minute call. Uh, to chat about anything you want, or we can even set up a one hour Zoom session one on one where uh, we'll record it and again talk about whatever you want, help you uh, solve any problems you have, learn something new in Ableton Live, no matter what it is. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care. Have a great rest of the summer.